I grew loofah sponges in my garden this year in Western New York, so not quite the ideal place to grow them, but I harvested and processed 15 full-grown loofahs. Hi, I'm Maria. Welcome to Living Planet Friendly, where I share my imperfect, low-waste, plant-based, planet-friendly lifestyle. This was my first year gardening in not just containers and I learned so much. I wasn't quite sure how successful my first year would be, but I wanted to grow something unique in my garden. During the whole season, I grew some lettuce, spinach, kale, beans, snow peas, green onions, kaleidoscope carrots, peppers, tomatoes, basil, thyme, lavender, catnip, and my favorite and most unique, loofahs. I had no idea if these would even grow in my area and to be honest, I didn't do any research to see if these are even possible to grow in my zone. I bought a packet of seeds on Amazon, which I will link in the description and I started to sprout them in April. Out of the whole packet of seeds, probably 20 of them, only two of them actually sprouted and became seedlings. I planted them in biodegradable pots indoors and very quickly roots kind of spread through the pot. I planted the pots right in the garden about eight inches from one another. When I planted my garden in May, the plants were so small, probably like three inches. I watered them every day through the end of May, all of June, and probably a little bit into July. Extremely quickly, the loofahs took over the whole garden. They choked out my snow peas, my green beans, and outgrew their trellis, reached to our deck, and climbed all the way down the railing. The leaves are huge and there are so many of them. In July and August, I got my first gourd. It grew slowly and steadily and it grew right back here. And then all of a sudden, overnight, there were so many pollinators in my garden. And then the gourds popped up literally everywhere. I actually ended up with 18 loofahs. 16 of them are full grown and two of them are still very small. One's about the size of a pickle and one's halfway between. In the beginning of October, our first frost in Buffalo came. So the morning after I cut 15 of the loofahs off and began to process them. The two smaller ones I did leave on the vine. I wanted to see if they would grow anymore during October, which ranges from 40 to 60 degrees. And I left one full grown on the vine to see how it would do with the frost and just kind of what happened. It was my first year, so I really wanted to experiment to see how I could grow these in this area successfully. Before I get into processing, I do want to talk about what I'm going to do differently next year. First off, in the back of my yard, I'm going to have two of these Vigo Garden beds with a space in between them and a trellis connecting them. And then the loofahs can grow back and forth over the trellis again. They will have plenty of stable climbing room unlike this year and just a lot of room to grow without killing any of my plants. I will also be starting loofah seeds indoors in February. Loofahs need anywhere from 150 to 200 days to grow and I really just started them way too late this year. On to processing. I shared a sneak peek on TikTok about how to process loofahs green and multiple people People sure that I did it wrong. Well, I didn't do it wrong, but I did it in a way that's not common. Honestly, I was really nervous that I wouldn't dry them properly and they would mold and I would lose all of the loofahs that I put in so much hard work for my first year of growing. So that's one reason why I processed them green. That's just one way to do it. Depending on your climate, you can also let them dry right on the vine. They'll turn brown and dry out and then the seeds will rattle inside of it. They'll be super easy to peel and then you can just shake the seeds right out. Way less processing time. Again, I started my my seeds way too late to be able to do that and with the dropping temps there's no way they would have dried out on the vine. Alternatively you can cut them off the vine and let them dry indoors somewhere with great airflow so they don't mold. I didn't have a good enough spot set up for it this year so maybe next year. So this year I processed them green so let's talk about how I did that. After cutting them off the vine I brought them all inside and I let them get to room temperature they were so cold because it had frosted the night before. I cut the ends off of each side of the loofah and then cut it in half. I made a small slit down the skin of the loofahs and use a scraper to gently peel the skin off of the inside. Once the skin was off, I put it in my kitchen sink filled with warm water to soak. I cut up a few of them at a time and then transferred them all over to the sink. After a few minutes of soaking, I squeezed the heck out of these loofahs. I'm not gonna lie, my hands hurt so bad at the end of this. So next time if I process them green, I'm gonna split them up in a couple batches over the period of a couple days. I had to squeeze these so much to get all of the sap and the pulp out. And they were hard like zucchini. They did squeeze out pretty easily. It was just a lot of squeezing. Once the sap was out, I could actually shake these so the seeds would fly out into the sink. And once they were mostly cleaned out, I put them outside on our deck table to dry in the sun for a couple days. Temps were only like 60 during the day, but they dried out pretty quick. And they sound like this. 
They processed perfectly and came out way better than I expected. This is just a small segment of the big loofah. Now they're in a box in my basement without a lid. Loofahs are perfect for washing your body in the shower or for washing dishes. And they're compostable unlike plastic sponges. When they're dry, they're really rough, but once you add a little water, they become the perfect scrubber. As long as they dry out properly in between uses, they will last for months. Processing all of these loofahs took about four hours. Next year, if I start them early, Early enough I'm gonna let them dry out on the vine and if they didn't dry on the vine I'm gonna dry them indoors with hopefully a better setup with the three loofahs that are left on the vine I'm gonna take the full-grown one and try to dry it inside I'm gonna eat the smallest one you can eat them when they're the size of a pickle so I'm gonna try one and see how it tastes and the mid-sized one that's only half grown I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do with it yet I've gotten so many questions about selling seeds or selling the loofahs themselves and this year I will not be I would love to do that next year but I can't just selling seeds this year when I haven't tried to sprout these seeds yet from this vine so in February I'm gonna try to sprout all of the seeds that I got this year and maybe sell some starts locally but I want to have a season of sprouting the seeds myself to see if they're viable and see what will and won't be from this vine so next fall I'll come back and maybe I'll be selling seeds or sponges that's all for now I really loved growing loofahs this year and I can't wait to grow them next year too I learned so much in general this year from my gardening endeavors and I'm one step closer to growing all of our own food and having a mini homestead. If you have any questions about these, I would love to answer them. Drop them in the comments. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow at Living Planet Friendly on TikTok, Instagram, and Pinterest. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week. <coughs> okay, I still live near an airport. Wow, this is a loud plane. I hope you can't tell that this loofah plant is literally dying. The frost is turning all of these leaves brown. Damn.